this begins from the fourth verse and goes to the tenth verse is the last verse over here. So if we move back, it starts from the second verse actually. So two to ten is what it goes on, and eleventh the Lord replies. So the so Narsimhadev has been asked. Uh, Narsimhadev is asking Prahlad, "What do you want?" And his reply is, "Oh, I have paraphrased these verses to just so that we can get understanding of the flow. So I will I just tell the overall sequence of what is happening, and then we'll see how much time we have to go into each of the verses. So the first verse Prahlad says is, "My dear Lord, please don't tempt me. Please don't tempt me." And then he says, "I'm born in a demoniac family, and I have come to you for shelter from the temptations of this world." And then he says, "No, it's like Chakravarti Pada Rachar 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 is the envision a conversation that is going on." So the Lord says, "Prahlad, you are not, you are not a demon. You are my pure devotee." So he says. That brutal action of Jagyasur. Next verse says that actually, yes, my dear Lord, I know that you have sent me in this family to exhibit the characteristics of your devotion. But right now, I am in this this particular situation, and I am vulnerable. This is a dangerous situation. So therefore, my dear Lord, please don't tempt me. So he is first taking on the fallen role of being a fallen person. But he says, "The Lord says you are not fallen." Yes, my dear Lord. Yeah. Otherwise, the two verses seem almost contradictory. The previous verse is saying, "I am born in a demoniac family." The next verse is saying, "You have sent me here to exhibit the symptoms of pure devotion." So how can that be? So he's saying, "Yes, that that that's the mission with which you sent me here, but I am in a vulnerable situation." And then the next verse he says, "Nanya tha the kil guru." But then the question comes up. Uh, the the Lord says, "Do you really think I will tempt you? Is that what you think about me? How can I tempt you?" He says, "Yes, my dear Lord, I know that you can you can never tempt anyone, but you are so kind that even if a devotee gets tempted by material things, you don't reject that devotee. You accommodate even that devotee." Mm -hmm. So, but then he goes on and says that such a person who comes to you because of material desires, that person is actually not a pure person. That person is not a pure devotee. It is your kindness that you accommodate such a person. But mm, while it is your kindness, that is not the speciality of that. And he expresses his desire, my dear Lord. I don't want to be like that. I want to be aham to akamas to the bhaktas. I just want to be your unmotivated devotee, and I want you to be my unconditional master. So it's basically he's saying, I I don't want to be tempted. You will. You are not tempting me. And even if somebody gets tempted, you accept that person. But I don't want to be that kind of person. I just want to be purely devoted to you. He says, "You know that uh, that I know that you love me. You know that I love you. Why are you even worried about these things?" The Lord says. So he replies that, "Therefore, O oh Lord, I am saying to you, and if at all you want to give me anything, you have asked me for blessing. The only blessing I want is that you free all material desires from my heart. I don't want any single desire at all in my heart." And then he says, "There are no material desires in your heart, Prala. Why are you so worried?" He says, "I am worried because I know how dangerous material desires can be." He says that one desire it can contaminate the entire being. So indriyani mana prana. On the other hand, he says next verse that if one can become free from desires, then one can be intimately united with you. one can be truly situated in the same spiritual position in which you are situated and then finally he says my dear lord i i surrender to your plan i offer my obeisances to you 
I will do whatever it is that you want me to do. I will do your will. So the Lord will eventually tell him that you become the king and you serve as the king. That is what my, my will is for you. And the Lord also tells him how you can stay protected. He says that. He goes on and speaks various verses. Bhogena punyam kushalena papam. This is probably one of the most important verses about practically living in this world. So the Lord replies to him. But let's look at these verses. So this is the overall sequence where the Lord is saying, please do not tempt me. So we could say that this has three sections broadly. One is, the first section is about Prahlad's concerns. Hmm. Then he says, the Lord's characteristics. Mm -hmm. And then, lastly, material desires and devotion. Mm -hmm. So, let's look at these three things. This is this goes from the second verse till the tenth verse. Mm -hmm. So, let's recite some of these verses. Let's go backward. Shri Praharadu Vacha Mamam Pralobayat Potya Saktam Kame Shutai Dvarai Tatsanga Bhito Nirvigno Mumukshu Swamu Pashvitaha So here, the theme is that of shelter. Shelter from desire. Mm -hmm. So this is the difference between bhakti and punya. Mm -hmm. in, the Lord is the shelter from desire. Whereas in punya, the Lord is the shelter for desire. Shelter for desire means I have all these desires. I am not able to fulfill it. My dear Lord, please, you become an instrument for fulfilling my desires. So now, it may be mundane, but it is It is still the Lord is happy that the devotee is at least coming to me. So in the, in the progression where it's like if you consider desires and devotion, or desire than Krishna. So at, there is at the level of papa, at the level of sin, desires, they take us away from Krishna. Hmm? Now, at the level of punya, the desires take us toward Krishna and bring us back to the desire. <laughs> <laughs> so the desires don't take us entirely away from Krishna. We go to Krishna, but it is the desires that take us towards Krishna. Just like we have uh, Dhruva, very intense bhakti, but it is because he wanted a kingdom. Akama sarva kamo va moksha kamo Sarva kamo va. He had a strong desire. But bhakti is where, if you can say at this level, a devotee only desires the Lord. So. That's why in 12.8 and 9, Krishna, when he's talking about pure devotion, he talks about first a devotee is completely absorbed in him. And if one cannot do that, then that the purpose of trying to fix our mind on Krishna is to ultimately become absorbed in him, to ultimately to become immersed in him, to get to increase our desire for the Lord. So at that point, a devotee doesn't care for the material world. If something happens in the material world, that's wonderful. That is the mood. I don't want anything in the material world. The Lord wants to give devotee abandoned things in the material world so that the devotee can use those things in Krishna's service. But so initially what is happening is Prahlad Maharaj is positioning himself here. So Prahlad is positioning himself here in, and he's saying, my dear Lord, 
वाय आर यू टेम्पटिंग मी प्लीज मामा प्रलोभ उत्पत्या सत्तम कामेशु तैरवर दैट please don't tempt me this desires this indulgences this temptations will take me away from you and the lord is saying the next verse we go over here the lord is saying you are not actually here prahlad you are here you desire me only hmm? that, that let's look at what the next verse is vritya lak okay vritya lakshana jikyasu भक्तम कामेश्वचोदय भवान संसार बीजेशु हृदय ग्रंथिशु प्रभो सो हियर ही सेइंग दैट यस माय डियर लॉर्ड यू हैव सेंट मी टू दिस वर्ल्ड वृत्ति लक्षण जिज्ञासु जिज्ञासु इज इनक्विजिटिव सो दोस हु वांट टू नो what are the characteristics of a pure devotee what are the characteristics of a servant of yours to demonstrate to them bhaktam kameshu you have desiring this you have sent me to this world but the very fact that i have come to this world means that it is a place of i am in a contaminated place just like uh, generally speaking when we talk about desires we can take a moral view of desires or we can take a clinical view of desires hmm? what do you mean by moral view if somebody has a desire that is wrong you should not be having this kind of desires hmm? that's a moral view of desires and there's utility in taking that view but a clinical view is that desires are basically what arise because of the interaction of the material body with the material objects so for example in 523 krishna takes us more of a clinical view he says that shaknoti hai vaya sodum prak shari vimokshanat kama krodhod bhavam vegam sayukta sa sukhinara he says as long as we have a body we will have desires so uh, is that just a natural result of our embodied condition but he says uh, that doesn't mean that we have to succumb to those desires we should learn to tolerate but a clinical view is it is just natural so it's like suppose somebody is a doctor and the doctor goes into a area where there's a pandemic uh, the doctor is also vulnerable to become infected isn't it so a clinical view is more like a doctor going to a pandemic zone hmm so prahlad is saying that this material world is like a pandemic zone it's a filled with material desires and those desires are not just out there he is saying that the desires come in the heart also because just by the embodied condition some desires come so at a fun- the, so clinical level is it's just more like a functional reality those desires will come but a moral level is, so clinical means it arises out of the condition you can say condition that's external can be conditioning internally also moral is more of a choice that when the desire comes what do we do about it so krishna says in 270 for example that आपूर्यमचल प्रतिष्ठ समुद्रमाप प्रवशंते तद्वत्मा प्रवशंति सर्वे स शांति मोती न काम कामी न काम कामी मीन डोंट बी अ डिजायर ऑफ डिजायर इट्स अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग फ्रेज डोंट बी अ डिजायर ऑफ डिजायर दैट मीन्स वॉट इट इज सेंग इज डिजायर is from a clinical perspective desire will naturally arise because we live in the material world but from a moral perspective don't accept that desire this is what krishna is saying we the desires may come we don't have to accept that prop so you could say that it's more like this is like a proposition and this is more like a decision so a proposition comes up oh eat this watch this touch this enjoy this so yes i am going to do it so proposition a may be unavoidable because that is just the nature of the world but decision is avoidable so he is pradhi saying my dear lord i am in this vulnerable zone you have sent me on a pure mission but i am in a vulnerable zone right now so please don't tempt me please don't put me in further danger 
So you have sent me for a higher mission, but these dangers are there. Let's move on to the next verse now. Nanyathate akhila guro Ghateta karunatmanaha Yasta ashisha ashaste Nasabhutya savaimani So then the Lord is saying that Oh, why, are so much, why do you consider desires to be so dangerous? There are so many people who have desires and still they come to me. Still they are connected with me. Still they are also worshipping me. He says, yes, my dear Lord, they do worship you. But they are not prithyaha. They are not servants. They are vanik. They are, they, are, they are having a relationship. When you talk about a relationship with the Lord, hmm, the relationship can be transactional or the relationship can be transformational. Mm. Transactional means like we go to a business person, we go to a shopkeeper, we give the money and uh, they give us a product. Now, that is simply a transactional relationship. Neither that person is transformed by it nor are we transformed. Only some, uh, some things exchange hands. But for a devotee, the primary purpose, so it's like the transactional relationship means what? Mm. Could illustrate like this, that at the Lord and devotee come close to each other. And now the Lord doesn't go away, but it's more like the devotee comes close to the Lord or the transactional person, they come to the Lord and they go away. This is the Lord. This is the, You come for a particular purpose, you offer something, get something and then go away. That's transactional. But transformational means that the devotee keeps coming closer and closer and closer to the Lord. And it's eternally devotee's heart. The Lord says in Prahlad's, in Ambarish Maharaj's prayers that Sadhavo Rudayam Mahyam that the saintly devotees reside in my heart and I reside in their heart. Krishna also says the same thing in 929 in the Bhagavad Gita. He says that Samoham Ye bhajanti tu baam bhaktya mai te teshu chapya. That they exist in me and I exist in them. So that eternal union is there. We could say eternally increasing union is there. So this is a transformational relationship. This is the kind of relationship that I seek. Nasa vrityah savai vanik. So some people come to the Lord but their interest is not the Lord. Their interest is what? Their interest is their own desires. I don't want to be like this. So this is my concern. I want to, I want, I don't have, want to have business relationship. Hmm? It happens with us, say we are talking with someone and if that person is just interested in, they are interested, okay, okay, I told you to do this, have you done this, have you done that, have you done that? And they have no interest in us at all. It leaves a bit of a, Bit of a bad, not a pleasant feeling in our. Do you really even care for me at all? So that way, this relationship, he says, I don't want that kind of relationship with you. But then, so many people have that kind of relationship. What is the issue with that? So he says that he's now moving from his. So it's like the prayers, how they are happening is that the prayers are personal, universal, and personal. It's like he's expressing his personal emotions. Then he's talking about some universal principles. There are personal concerns, the universal principles, and then there are personal aspirations. Aspirations is what does he aspire for? What does he want? So... Two to four are his personal concerns. My dear Lord, I don't want to be tempted. Then after that, now he is giving the principles of devotion. Asha sano navai vritya Swaminya shishatmanaha Na swamya vritya tahas swamyam 
इच्छन्यो राति चाशिषः सो ही सेइंग दैट वन हु कम्स प्राइमरीली टू यू फॉर डिजायर्स नाउ ही इज कंपेयर इन वन सेंस व्हाट ही इज डूइंग इज he is comparing at one level a person a materially motivated, motivated person with a devotee but is also comparing the lord with other masters he is saying that you know there can be in the relationship between say the worshipper and the worshipped the worshipper can be unsteady unsteady means the worshipper is not really interested in the lord so if you give me this wonderful if you don't give me this then i am not interested in you but he is saying even the worship worshipped can be insecure what does he mean by that that sometimes it may happen that we are afraid that if i don't do this for this person this person will go away and although something may not be good for that person but still we may do it for that person because we want to hold on to that person so basically this basically this insecure means there can be attached in the material sense in a negative sense attached and there can be negative sense attached over here also so sometimes uh, a person uh, see how it is that from our perspective we need the lord we need krishna hmm. although we don't realize we need krishna hmm. we think i can go on my life can go on without hmm. but from krishna's perspective krishna does not need us prahlad maharaj has mentioned that that he says he has talked about the how the lord is nijlabh purno in the previous chapter he is complete in himself from our perspective we need the lord from the lord's perspective the lord does not need us he wants us hmm? he does not need us he is complete in himself but he wants us because he cares for us so while he wants us he does not need us so if a devotee he says my dear lord you are such a person that you just to satisfy someone you will not give them something that is harmful to them mm -hmm. like a doctor if a patient wants something patient says diabetic and the doctor says the patient says you know i cannot live without sugar the doctor may give some some may allow the doctor the patient may take some sweets but the doctor will not prescribe something that is actively harmful to the patient so like that he says you are not so worried that people may go away if somebody wants to go away still you will not give them something that is harmful to them so he is talking about from your perspective you are not insecure you are not a possessive lord but on my side i don't want to be unsteady so he is talking about the characteristics of a of a of a utilitarian relationship from both sides some people bestow favors just so that they can hold on to their followers like duryodhan when he was a king recently i was asked this question i was in india you call it Now, Duryodhan was not a bad king. When he was a king, as per the Mahabharata describes, he was a good king in the sense that he was administering the kingdom well, and that's why Narasim, that's why Yudhishthir also says that, you know, it is for my own personal greed that I got this kingdom. Duryodhan was managing the kingdom quite well. Well, he was managing, but why was he managing? It was because he just wanted to hold on to people. It, it's he wanted that in future when yudhishthir and the pandavas will challenge me i want people to be on my side but did he really want the good of people or he just wanted them to be good to him mm -hmm. it's like a government it can give it can empower people uh, by creating employment by creating facilities or the government can just give freebies you know we'll give you this we'll give you that we'll give that but that creates an unhealthy dependence so duryodhan was giving a lot of favors but that was not out of any concern for the people it was concern for power not for people so it that's a very different thing now after this he says this is one of the well known verses from the section and he saying what is the 
what is the standard of devotion that he wants to follow aham tva kamas tvat bhaktas tvam cha swami anapashraya nanya the thavayor artho raj sevakayor iv so akamas tvad bhaktas i am your devotee without any motivated desires and swami anapashraya that means when you are a master you are not you don't need us you are not taking shelter of us so like a master sometimes gets a sense of shelter by how many followers i have if i don't have followers the master starts feeling insecure so tom che swami anapashraya you don't need followers for your shelter and this is a pure relationship so he said this is the standard of pure relationship that i seek from you and because i want to seek this relationship therefore the prayer that i ask you for is that the my only desire is that there be no desire in my heart that is my prayer yati dasya si me kaman varam swam varadarshabha ो so when the word kama is used it is used primarily for desires that take us away from the lord we may call it material desires but how do we exactly define a material desire sometimes a desire devotee they may desire a material thing for the sake of the lord for serving the lord so the test is that in one sense desire is equal to devotion why is what do you mean by that if there is devotion naturally there will be desire we would desire to chant the holy names to take darshan of the lord to do service for the lord prabhupad was prabhupad's distinguishing characteristic among many was that he had the strongest desire to share mahaprabhu's spread mahaprabhu's mission all over the world and many of his other god brothers may have been more uh, learned than him in terms of literal scripture learning they may be more renounced than him in the sense that there be lifelong renunciates but prabhupada was defined by that overpowering desire to serve the lord so in one sense you could say as a desire for krishna increases that is a sign that our devotion is also increasing tatra laulyam api maulyam ekat that in fact that strong desire is the characteristic is a prize for krishna consciousness bhakti samas sindhu says so when we say that we should not have any desires so we may say we don't have material desires but kamam when the word kama is used so how are we going to define material desires basically it is not just desire for material things because as long as we are in the material world even to serve the lord we need material things you want to offer bhoga to the lord that is a material thing you may say it's being offered to the lord so it's spiritual okay but it is a thing in the material world it is made of matter so it does not material desire is not desire for material things it is more for desire that takes us away from krishna now the question comes up Uh, what if we want so there is desire for the lord and there is desire for things for the lord isn't it i can i can oh, you know i want to have a big house so that i can have a big altar which i can serve the lord even i want to build build a big temple for the lord so what about those desires so there is desire for krishna and there is desire for things for krishna hmm. 
So now the test is that we could say that both of them could be devotional desires and it is definitely possible. But the test is that the desire for Krishna needs to be stronger than our desire for the things for Krishna. Sometimes what happens is we are trying to do some service and that service is not working. And because of that, we become so irritated. You know, this, uh, this person is not cooperating. This is not happening. That is not happening. And then our heart itself becomes very bitter because of that. In trying to offer the world to Krishna, we make our heart unofferable to Krishna. That should not happen. Uh, Krishna says, Bhajatam Preeti Purvakam. Not Bhajatam Resentment Purvakam. Not Bhajatam Anger Purvakam. Not Bhajatam. So, yes, we want to offer things to Krishna. So this is, you want to offer the world to Krishna, but you want to offer our heart to Krishna. And offering our heart is the most important thing. Srila Prabhupada wanted to offer the whole world to Krishna. Uh, yet, when Prabhupada came to America and devotees, the new people who later became devotees, they met him. They didn't see that Prabhupada was bitter or unsatisfied or resentful. I have tried so much to serve Krishna, nothing is working. Even then, Prabhupada was cheerful. Prabhupada was happy speaking about Krishna, happy about glorifying Krishna. And whatever worked out, Prabhupada was doing his best to make things work out. But his desire for Krishna was greater than his desire for things that he wanted to offer to Krishna. And that's why a devotee is, on one side, a devotee has aspirations. We have many aspirations, but a devotee also has satisfaction. If this combination of devotion is both Krishna, whatever situation you are putting, going to put me in, I accept that situation because I just want to connect with you. So I'm satisfied in that. At the same time, there's so much more I want to do for you. So in that sense, devotion is a combination of both satisfaction and aspiration. If there is only satisfaction, then that will lead to lethargy. Mm -hmm. that will lead to apathy we will, we will not do any service to Krishna mm -hmm. okay I am satisfied like Krishna you are happy there I am happy here let's be happy <laughs> <laughs> that will lead to Lutharji on the other hand if there is only aspiration and there is no satisfaction then eventually this will lead to bitterness Krishna, I am trying to do so much. Why are you not helping me? Why, is, why are people not helping me? Why are things going so wrong? So we need a combination of both. Satisfaction plus aspiration. That there is so much more I would like to do for Krishna. But whatever I am able to do, I am grateful for that opportunity. I am happy that I am able to connect with you, Lord. So when Prahlad is saying, let there be no desires in my heart. His point is, let no desire become so strong in my heart that it takes me away from you. That the desire for doing things for you should not take me away from you. And then after that, next verse he says, then he talks about how the, the power of desire, desire may start small, but the desire keeps growing, keeps growing, and it takes away one's entire being. Yasya nashanti janmana. One's whole life can be ruined by desires. Let's keep this verse. Eh? And then on the other hand, if one can give up such desires, so we desire the Lord and we desire things for the Lord. But if something is not working out, vimunchati kaman. One is able to give up that desire. Then what happens is manasi sthitan. The mind becomes stable. If the mind can be uh, achala or the mind can be chanchala. Mm -hmm. Chanchala is constantly going here, there, and everywhere. Achala means it's Vivasayatmika Buddhi Ekeha Kurunda. It's fixed on the Lord. So that it says when our when our mind becomes steady, manasistitan, then we attain the same spiritual nature that the Lord has. And that is what we aspire for. Now, how exactly the Lord will bring that about in our lives? That is up to Him. So we surrender to Him. So this last verse is also 
a verse ex expressing acceptance of the Lord's plan. So this is the heart of Prahlad Maharaj that is being expressed in these verses. And we can also aspire for this kind of pure devotion. So I'll summarize what I discussed today. So we discussed a quick overview in the beginning of the verse. So that's what we did again. But overview was what? There is his concerns, characteristics of devotion, and then there are the aspirations. So <clears throat> two to four of the character characteristics and then seven to 10 are the aspirations. So in this connection, we discussed how when a devotee is practicing bhakti, the important thing is that the relationship we want it to be not transactional, but transformational. transformational. Mm -hmm. That means the transformation is that our desire for the Lord increases, that we come closer to the Lord. And then with respect to desires, we want, it's not that we just want to give up desires, it's like our desire for Krishna, we want it to increase. Then desire for the things for Krishna, that is also good to have, but it should not become stronger than the desire for Krishna. And desire for or desire that take, desire for things that take us away from Krishna, that we want it to decrease and we want it to become zero ultimately. So that is Prahlad's prayer saying that let this become decrease so that it becomes ultimately zero. And in that way, we can become our entire being, our whole consciousness can become Krishna Mai. It can become filled with Krishna. Thank you very much. Shri Prahlad Maharaj Ki. Shri Prabhupada Ki. Gaur Bhakta Vinda Ki. Gaur Pranamante. Thank you very much. Okay, one, one or two questions. Yes, please. Yes, please. Thanks, Samaruti. Wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much for really nicely detailing all the inner mode of Allah Maharaj and a beautiful presentation which is going to be a spectrum I could never get into. Um, while, while hearing this beautiful katha, there was some, um, some uh, perception came and I just wanted to get some clarification on that. It apparently looks like there are three horizons. On one horizon, Pradhan Maharajas and our great Acharyas are there. It's such a higher platform. They are already living in the heart of Krishna like you talked about it. It, it is both ways. Um, for them, practicing Bhakti, apparently, though there are challenges in their life, but because they are so much connected to Krishna, they are not affected by that apparently. There is a second horizon which I was thinking about Guru Maharaj, who did not actually went to Krishna with the desire that I want a pure devotional service. So he was going here, but by the mercy of the Lord, he immediately went to the first horizon and practiced at that platform. I was thinking about devotees like myself who are the third horizon, who cannot go to that level because there are like you talked about being in material world, we are always attacked by material desires. Even if I don't want it, and I know this is not favorable for me. But the God comes and you share a beautiful point, we don't act on that, which is beautiful. But it looks like to go to the spiritual world or to attain the world to speak of Krishna, I cannot continue on this horizon. I have to go to the third horizon. But this is not under my capacity. Yeah. So by horizon, I think you're using the word levels. Right. Three levels, okay. So I'm not sure whether Dhruva Maharaj was at the third level, first level immediately, because we see that Dhruva does also become angry when Uttama is killed. And he starts killing disproportionately also. So now, of course, you could say that's the Lila of the Lord. But the point is then, he accepts. So, so the point is that the nature of the material world is sometimes even somebody after seeing the Lord can come under the spell of anger. But then he's protected. When Manu comes and gives him instruction, he lets go of his anger. So rather than just expecting pure devotion, expecting that we will always 
stay at the center of pure devotion all the time we need to keep ourselves in good association or at least be accountable to good association be subordinate to good association then even if we go off track we will be brought back on track and uh, as far as the level we are at um, one aspect of devotion is satisfaction that where we are right now we need to be satisfied by that it is not that the lord has rejected us because of where we are the lord knows where we are and uh, we want to become purified and attain the lord but then things take time and uh, which we don't have to we don't have to put um, in the in the name of uh, seeing pure devotion as very lofty we don't have to make krishna into an unreasonably demanding god krishna is an understanding god because he is the mam prapatti krishna is from wherever we are we are taking steps towards him we are moving closer to him and just like if we consider a parent and a child now if our child is learning to walk every step that our child takes uh, we are happy with that now if a child is just learning to walk it's not that we expect a child next year to uh, to run a marathon mm-hmm. so if as parents we are understanding towards our children why will krishna the supreme parent not be understanding towards us so oh, krishna will krishna knows where we are krishna will guide us forward so somehow in the name of yes we want to go back to krishna and it's not that krishna doesn't want us to come Krishna also wants us, as Prabhupada said in the first canto, that Krishna's desire that we come to Him is more than our desire that we go to Him. So His desire is very much there. So He will help us become purified so that we can come closer to Him and ultimately attain Him. So how that will happen? That is something which uh, which life will be an unfolding adventure in that direction. So we don't have to put ourselves down too much or catastrophize the future. so even if we are not purified enough to go back to god at the end of this life that's not the end of existence if we are serve krishna life long krishna will take us to a place where we can continue serving and coming closer to him so if you are pure enough to go back to him wonderful if you are not pure enough to him that doesn't mean we are doomed krishna is not going to forget what we have done for him so our desire for purity uh should create intensity not insecurity hmm. that we want to be pure but in that time we should not become insecure because otherwise we if we are insecure then that means we don't have faith in krishna sometimes we have more faith in our fallen condition than in krishna to elevate us from our fallen condition <laughs> isn't it <laughs> that is not that is not necessary so desire for purity it should lead to intensity in bhakti it's not it's not insecurity in bhakti okay any other question yes sir one question is on satisfaction and aspiration yeah that's why we need to have the association that will bring the balance to us if we tend to go too much towards aspiration and because of that we are constantly dissatisfied then we need to see devotees who are satisfied we to associate with devotees who have satisfaction and if we are having too much satisfaction then we have to associate with devotees who have that aspiration who have that urge to do a lot for krishna so largely bhakti sanjayate bhakti it's that our desires will arise from association so we have to see 
what is it that we need sometimes we need a zeal come on let's do a lot of things for krishna and then we associate that kind of devotees but sometimes the we need we need we need calmness we need acceptance we need a sense of peacefulness so then it's inspiring even to associate with devotees who who are doing simple services jaydwait maaj one said that one devotee had asked him maaj what gives you faith in bhakti so he had said there was a devotee a brahmachari in vrindavan uh, temple he had been uh, for almost 50 years he was a brahmachari there he would do puri services and other services he says in the morning when he is there he like to serve charanamrut so day after day month after month year after year to see him happily serving charanamrut so that gives me faith in bhakti this is a very interesting answer he is not a well known devotee he is not having thousands and thousands of disciples but that he can continue this life long doing this service that indicates there is some intrinsic satis- intrinsic joy in devotion also so now but did that mean that maharaj said that i also i will come like that and i also start some jana with him down no that is not what he did he continues traveling and preaching according to his capacity so i think both are required so we get the depending on where we are we seek the kind of association that will balance our devotion yes so at every point in our spiritual life uh, how can i determine that for example at this point am i fully surrendered and then just surrender i don't know about fully surrendered i would say surrendered fully according to our capacity because full surrender we, we, it it may not be possible for us because we have our capacity right now so that is it is not so easy to determine but uh, broadly two three things we could say that uh, one is that we can try to change our context that means change our context means what that say if uh, i had been instead of serving krishna i had been working in a company and i had a lot of aspirations you know how much would i be invested in my job and my career am i similarly invested here so consider some other context and see how we would put efforts like that and then we can get a fair idea you know okay you know even if i had a job it is okay one or two days i can stay awake late and i can work to meet project deadlines but every day if i had to sleep late i can't do it. but if i say no day can i extend myself it's good to be regulated but we don't want to be more attached to the regulation than to krishna isn't it so we changing our context mentally changing our context not physically but necessarily mentally changing our context that helps us to evaluate what is our capacity or are we exercising according to our capacity or not another thing is that um, sometimes in that moment it is difficult to decide but afterwards when we do some introspection basically when we say we can't do something is that an explanation or is that an excuse you know this how do we decide that so basically one thing is change of context second is retrospection retrospection means look back look back and then decide so at that time we may, we may just go along with our gut feeling i can do this or i can't do this because of this 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 but then afterwards we we don't want to just want to practice bhakti at that moment sometimes we focus on practicing bhakti intensely just true but we want to practice bhakti intensely and sustainably 
not just today i want to practice bhakti so much that the you know, today i lift a huge crate of books and tomorrow somebody has to lift me up and carry me is it because my back is broken or something like that i don't want to be like that so if you want to practice bhakti sustainably also so it's i think the whole thing comes up is ultimately it's a relationship with krishna so rather than thinking about in fragmental terms and you know am i serious about this activity am i serious about waking up in the morning am i serious about fasting on ekadashi it like see that it's a relationship with krishna so in that relationship in every relationship we stretch ourselves but it's not that we can stretch ourselves so much that we just break down completely we the we don't want to oh, our even krishna krishna has not given us our individuality so that we lose our individuality isn't it so krishna wants us to use our individuality our individuality gets perfected in our relationship with krishna so that's why so we can again consider that of other relationships what are we how much are we able to stretch ourselves so if you keep the point of a relationship that gives a more holistic picture it's not just about the quality of our chanting it's not just the quality of our waking up in the morning not just how many hours we are studying shastra all that is important but all of that is prabhupada said ultimately what pleases me is that you love krishna so if we keep that in mind that we keep that relationship with krishna is our purpose then it becomes easier when i was growing up my you know you, most of you know that i have polio i can't walk very well so my mother I, took me to various places to get treated and there were a lot of med treatments and exercises at one time i was doing some exercise even where eight hours we used to do exercise it was like i stayed for one year at that place i was attending school from home school from the hospital only from the clinic so the exercise was very tiring so i mean i told my i just there's too much exhaustion too much discomfort which when i can't exercise So my mother told me, you know, if you're going to, say, if if you say that there's too much pain, I'm not going to push you, because I don't know how much pain you're going through. But it says that it is your mobility in the future that is at stake. So you have to be honest with yourself, and you decide. Don't let your pain become an excuse for not exercising. The pain is an authentic reason. You decide that, and I trust you for your judgment. So like that, we ultimately have to take responsibility for ourselves, and so don't be too hard, but don't be too soft also. As a yukta har viharas, so we learn from experience what will be too little or what will be too much. You can we also say that if if the sign if the surrender if the relationship with Krishna is not permanent, then actually we have to think of Krishna more. Well, yes. think about krishna more and more but it doesn't thinking of krishna is also not in isolation it was not that when uh, when uh, arjuna was fighting a war was arjuna thinking of krishna of course he was thinking of krishna's mission but he was also focusing on uh, the service to krishna he was fighting against particular warriors so yes definitely thinking about krishna will increase but it we shouldn't think of krishna that krishna only exists somewhere up there and i am sitting alone in my room and thinking about krishna it could be dynamic through our service also so while we are doing our service so we are giving a class maybe initially when we are giving class our concern is how many people are coming for my class how many people are becoming my followers how much can i impress my seniors and my peers by how how many people follow me that could be our initial consideration and that's not bad because still within the purview of basically serving krishna but then over a period of time when we are trying to share krishna this our focus is at krishna is in the heart of this person and when we pray krishna let this person be drawn towards you and let me be an instrument for that and sometimes it may happen that some people may be more attracted by someone else rather than us they may be introduced by us they may be attracted by someone else but if they are becoming steady in their devotion then we 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 not so attached to them so basically that yes our remembrance of krishna will increase but remembrance of krishna is not in isolation necessary okay. so what you are saying that the quality of the quality i mean not uh, 
Yes, true. See, it's like if we are here, initially, like the world is big for us, and Krishna is small for us. But as we grow in bhakti, the world becomes small and Krishna becomes big for us. So Krishna becomes the bigger reality. And this essentially is spiritual growth. So it is not that the world becomes unimportant. The world is still important because the world is our arena for service to Krishna. Uh, but another point is that initially it's also like the Krishna is the means to the world for us. We are more concerned about how our service is recognized and rewarded in the world. Hmm? But as we grow, the world is our means to Krishna. And that's how Patram Pushpam Palam. If all that I have offered is a leaf or a flower, I'm offering it to Krishna. That is the most important thing. I don't need a huge grand offering to me. If I can make that's wonderful. So, yes, so in that sense, the quality increases. Thank you very much. Kantrash, Mahagatam, Ki, Chai. Great, Kaitana Charan Prabhuji, Ki, Chai.